Hello and welcome to Tina's Joyful Kitchen. And on today's show, since it's November, we are going to do the butternut squash show. Everything is typically turkey this, turkey that, and I'm just a butternut squash crazy woman. So we're going to make this butternut squash gratin, and then we're gonna make a butternut squash salad with this tahini, yummy, yummy dressing. All right, let's get the party started. Let's get the party started. We're gonna start with, I've already cut up one butternut squash. We're gonna start with the roasted salad. So we're gonna roast up, I'll show you, don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to cut up a butternut squash in just a few moments. But this one I wanted to do ahead of time. I have the oven on, 425, just turned it on, it's heating up. So always start with what's gonna take the longest and that's heating up the oven. I chopped up my butternut squash and I want to add an onion to this. I like a red onion. Look, you can use whatever onion you would like, okay? And I like the red onion. I like the color of the red onion and I like the flavor of red onions too. But again, you can use whichever red onion you would like. So I'm just gonna slice or chop up my onion real quick. And don't worry about making a mess on your countertop because you can always swoosh it up and put it right into, what do I put, what do I do with my vegetable scraps? Compost. Goes right in my compost. Why? Because mother nature knows what to do with the leftover scraps. All right, here we go. We're gonna grip our knives properly. If you remember, three fingers around the handle, Thumb on one side, finger on the index finger on the other, you're gripping your knife. You're not holding it like so. Remember, it will slip. So you grip. Don't slip, grip. Oh, I just made that up. Don't slip, grip. And since this is gonna be roasted, I'm going to roughly chop my onion, throw it in. And I want you to notice when I'm chopping, I am not looking at you. I am looking at my beautiful fingers. So remember, when you are chopping, you don't watch TV, you don't watch your kids, you watch your fingers. Uh, so while one hand is gripping, the other hand is in a claw or all fingers together, hand flat. I want you to always remember that, okay? Because we love our fingers and as I say, the most important tools in the kitchen are hands. Most important tools in the kitchen are our hands. Now, I want back to knife safety. I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna put it next to me, blade facing out, just safety. I have another knife sitting here as well, blade facing away from me so that I don't cut myself, right? Always think safety. Now, let's get some seasonings in here. I'm gonna do a little bit of sea salt. Why do we use sea salt? Full of minerals. Cumin, about two teaspoons of cumin and some black pepper, and I need some olive oil. Let's get some olive oil in here. A couple of tablespoons. Yeah, I do everything al occhio. Even though I'm a McDermott, my maiden name is Ragnacci. So I'm very, very, very Italian. My parents were born and raised. I've been going back and forth my entire life. Very Italian. Al occhio means by eye. So I just do things by eye. That's the way my mom taught me. My sister, who's a scientist, doesn't like doing anything by eye. I don't know how I got the way I am and the way she got the way she is. Who knows? So now I'm gonna use my stoneware. You know I love stoneware, love my stoneware. And I put my spoon in the sink already so I can't use my spoon to spread it out. So I am going to use my bowl. I was watching a little video the other day of a woman probably in her late 80s making ravioli and she took the bowl and was rolling and cutting them out. It was funny, it was adorable actually, absolutely adorable. Oven's on 425, I'm gonna roast this 40, 45 minutes. I want them to be caramelized and super duper yummy. In the oven it goes. And my lovely assistant, LJ, will you please put a 45 minute timer on for me please? Thank you. All right, so while that is in the oven, We'll get the rest of the salad together. Let's start with the dressing. Let's just keep going with the salad. I was thinking whether I wanted to do the rest of it later, but nope, we're gonna do it now. We're gonna make a dressing, and the dressing is going to be tahini. What is tahini? 
tahini are sesame seeds ground up. So instead of peanuts ground up or almonds ground up or pumpkins ground, pumpkin seeds ground up, they are ses sesame seeds ground up. I do not know, if anyone knows, can tell me where the word tahini came from. I don't know. I wanna know, but I don't know. So we've got some tahini in there. I've got about a quarter cup of water. I'm gonna do a couple tablespoons of lemon juice, freshly squeezed, of course. We're gonna do some sea salt and pepper, and we're gonna do some fresh garlic. I like minced garlic in my dressings. I don't like to chomp anything in my dressings, so I'm going to use a garlic press. I love this garlic press. It's easy to use and you can flip it around and it helps to take that out. I want a little bit more garlic going on here. And so I'm gonna get another piece from my bulb and you don't even have to peel it, which is kind of cool. Now, garlic, especially when it's raw and it's fresh, notice I'm not using powdered garlic, is immune boosting. It's going to boost your immune system. It's also antiviral, antibacterial, antimicrobial. All right, what am I missing in my dressing? Ah, mayonnaise. I'm gonna do, you can use olive oil if you wanna use olive oil in this dressing. Uh, and you could also use a mayonnaise. The mayonnaise that I use, I'll show you. This is one of my favorite mayonnaise because it doesn't have any um, inflammatory type oils. It's made with grapeseed oil and it's called veganaise. I love this mayonnaise. All right, here's our dressing. And it's done. There we go. We're gonna set this aside. We're gonna wait for those vegetables to roast and then we're going to assemble our salad later, okay? So let's set that aside. And while we're waiting, let's move on to our next dish. The next dish that we're going to make is a butternut squash gratin. I was just in Italy visiting family, actually. I was riding my bike in Italy for a week and went to visit family and Silvia made this dish for me and I flipped out at how delicious it was. So I'm winging it. It's the first time I'm making it right here, right now with you. And it's a butternut squash gratin. I was looking up recipes for this and I'm like, there is none. So we're just gonna make it up. But a lot of these recipes for this gratin use heavy cream and milk, and it's very soupy, and that's not what my cousin Sylvia made for me. So I'm going to show you. She told me the recipe. I got it in my head, and we're gonna make it together. Obviously, I am peeling my butternut squash. I love butternut squash. It's one of my favorites. When October rolls around, I get excited already for butternut squash. You can eat butternut squash, of course, all year round, but you see it abundantly in the stores starting in October, and it will last you for months. Okay, so buy a bunch when you find them on sale and eat them up. Obviously, I've got my vegetable peeler going on, and this is a very, very, very sharp vegetable peeler. Invest in good knives, invest in good sharp tools in your kitchen because it will save the most important tools in the kitchen, your hands from hurting too much. I went through a spat with hands hurting for several months and finally I'm through that, thank goodness, because they are super important. What do we do with vegetable scraps? Mother nature, put them right in compost. I said it to you before, in Italy, they, it's actually illegal for them to put vegetable scraps in the regular trash. So they have to put vegetable scraps in a compost and they have to dig a hole in their yard and bury it. All right, we have her peeled. Now we're going to slice them. I've already done one in about quarter inch slices, okay? Actually a little bit of peel going on there. Yeah, you don't wanna eat the peel on butternut squash, it could be it's, it's thick and it's um, bitter, okay? So I'm gonna cut it in half and I wanna show you something back to knife skills. I like to use a heavier knife. Oh, oven just came to temperature. 
when it comes to a heavier vegetable, okay? Also, this particular chef knife has these little grooves that help to release the food. It doesn't always work, but it does help to release the food. You see those little grooves in there. So I like a heavier knife versus my very thin shun knife. I don't like to use the thinner knives for a heavier vegetable. That's me. I just find that this one feels better in my hand when I'm doing something that's a little more um, robust, like a butternut squash. So the next thing I wanna show you, remember how you grip your knife. I have, to gr I have to hold the butternut squash. Do I wanna press down here? I want help because what if, I, there's just, I'm short, I have to get up here. So I'm gonna score it, right? I'm gonna put my hand flat, like I talked about, on the top of the knife. Mind you, I'm not using a pointed knife either. I'm using a blunted knife. If I use the pointed knife, there's a possibility of me slipping off and hurting myself, okay? Real, just really important, think about that, blunted knife. So hand on top, and I, yes, it will get on my tippy toes, and I'm going to press down. Do you see how I got all my fingers out of the way? Just want you to remember, get your fingers out of the way. So your non-dominant hand is either in what? A claw or flat fingers together, okay? Got that? So you're not gonna grip it like so, you're gonna grip it like so. All right, I've got quarter inch slices that I need to make. So here we go. If you have a mandolin, this could probably work on a mandolin. Eh, it might be too fat for a mandolin though. I don't know. I am tempted. I am tempted. We're going to try the mandolin. We're going to see if this mandolin works. You see what I mean? I wasn't sure if it was going to be too fat. And let's get the, oh, yes. So if you want your life to be a little easier, grab your mandolin. And there you go. Let's see if those slices, yep, there they go. Now, I'm not going to fish around in my drawer since this was last minute, but there is something that I put on, on top that grips it so you don't go and slice your hand. So I am not going to use this after this. Here we go. I like my hand, so we're just going to do it like so. One moment. Ta-da! Saved my hand. Here I'm talking about safety and I was doing it without being safe. Not a good idea, but that's okay. I cleaned it up. Now, when it comes to this piece here, there's seeds inside here. So we need to get those seeds out. I'll show you the way I'm gonna do this. I wanted to get to the seeds first. Not there yet. Okay, I'm there. We're gonna make this dish, I promise. I don't know if it was easier with the mandolin or the knife. I'm thinking the knife, quite honestly. Watch what I do again. Did you notice? Hand on top. Seeds. This is a grapefruit, grapefruit spoon. So it's got little ridges on it and it makes it easier to get the seeds out of the butternut squash. There you go. I was making this big vat of butternut squash soup for a holiday and I had my husband in here. We were peeling like five huge and chopping butternut squashes all at the same time. Insane. It was fun actually. If I can ever get my husband in the kitchen to help me cook, it's a miracle. And that was a miracle day. I'm teasing. All right, notice I used Instead of my knife to pick up stuff, I use a scraper. I always thought too many gadgets. Gadgets are helpful. You just don't want gadgets that do just one thing. You want gadgets that do multiple things, right? Okay. Aha! I got my rhythm. Beautiful slices. Look at that, look how pretty that is. And that 
is how you slice and peel a butternut squash. There we go. Okay, let's assemble our dish. What do we have here? We have obviously butternut squash. I have some Gruyere cheese. You can use whichever cheese you want. I have some Parmesan cheese. I like it freshly grated. Freshly grated Parmesan cheese. I have sea salt, pepper, olive oil, and some thyme. I'm not talking time like time on a clock. Time, T-H-Y-M-E. I'm gonna start off with a base of some olive oil, okay? Go liberal with your olive oil. And we're going to layer our butternut squash on the bottom. This is how Sylvia did it. This is how I'm doing it. I'm telling you those other dishes where you get milk and you get heavy cream and you boil it and then you, I'm like, that's just too much. I don't want to do that. I literally didn't want to do that. So we're going to do it this way. I think it needs a little more olive oil on the bottom. And since a lot of this butternut squash has holes, I'm going to make sure I cover everything on the bottom here. Okay. Looking good. This was delicious. I think I had three servings of this. I was a little hungry that night after biking for an entire week. Yeah. It was yummy. Good. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to put salt and pepper. So Italians always have an open thing of salt because you want to do your salt with your fingers because you know how much salt is going on there. And if you have, oh my gosh, that's too much, you can always put it back. If you need more, you get more. Okay. Freshly ground black pepper. I want you to know Italians do not use a lot of pepper. They say that it's bad for your heart. I have not heard that ever other than the Italians. Okay. Don't know why. So we got our freshly ground black pepper. It saves your hands, so I love my freshly ground black pepper. And I've got a little bit of thyme. I like thyme, and you could use oregano, you could use parsley, whatever your heart desires. What's next? Cheese, lots of cheese. Uh, I think she used a cheese called scamorza. Scamorza was the name of it. And this is a Gruyere, and I decided Gruyere would be good for today. And here we go. And I've got some Parmesan, just for a variety of flavor, Parmesan. I'm going to use a little more olive oil. The more the better. Olive oil, really, really, really good for your heart. Heart healthy. Okay, we're going to layer more of a butternut squash. I love butternut squash. Can you tell I'm doing a whole show on butternut squash? I love this stuff. It is so good. So, so, so good. Okay. I think I like it because it's, it's kind of on the sweeter side. And if you don't find butternut squash sweet, I don't know what else to tell you. I just don't know. So we're going to do a little bit more sea salt. I think I want just a smidgen more. Okay. A little bit more freshly ground black pepper. And a little more, you got it. No, we'll do the olive oil in a little bit. Hold on. I'm gonna put more cheese. Do we have enough for one more layer? No, we're gonna do, that's enough. Put all the cheese on there. Two layers are enough. One more Parmesan cheese. Don't be shy on the cheese. This is a cheese dish. Oh, that's what I forgot the thyme. I didn't put thyme underneath, but that's okay. We'll put it on the top. Okay. And here we go. A little bit more olive oil. Yep. I'm a little generous with my olive oil. Now, for this dish, what I wanna do because it's got the cheese, we don't want the cheese to burn. I'm going to put some tin foil over it. I'm gonna bake this at 350 for about 30 minutes. In 20 minutes, I'm gonna check it, possibly even take the tin foil off, 
and let the cheese bubble a little bit, okay? Now, I want to make note, in my oven, it's at 425 roasting vegetables. It's probably a little too hot for this. So we're gonna wait for those roasted vegetables to come out. I'm gonna lower the temperature and then bake this at, like I said, 350, around 30 minutes, checking at 20. And then the last 10 minutes, I want you to take the tinfoil off and let the cheese um, bubble a little bit. And that's what Sylvia told me to do, and that's what we're doing, and it's gonna be delicious. All right, we'll be right back. Hello and welcome back. Everything is out of the oven, and we are ready to, we're gonna start assembling the salad first, okay? Remember, we're butternut squash salad, and this is what we're gonna do. I got a beautiful tray, because we want pretty trays, and I have an arugula spinach mix. What? salad mix do you like use that this is remember the, the dressing that we just made i'm going to put my i'm going to toss it up okay okay we're going to toss that in our dressing by the way i took about a quarter cup of the dressing out because i want a little to drizzle on the top just so that it's pretty okay See what I got going on here? Okay, here we go. This is how you're gonna serve it, and it will look so pretty. People are gonna just salivate looking at this, because remember, digestion starts with the eyes. Digestion starts with the eyes. Okay. Here we go. Right. We roasted the vegetables and I let them sit out to cool for a little bit. So now, wait, if you put them on here hot, it will wilt the lettuce. And we don't really want that for the salad unless you want it for the salad. Totally up to you. So here are our roasted butternut squash and red onions. You're just gonna place it right on top of our salad here. I hope your mouth is watering, because mine is. Butternut squash, I'll tell you, my favorite stuff. Thank you, Mother Nature, for making butternut squash. I like it. I typically get volunteers in my garden. I don't even plant it, and I get a couple of them every single year. They just come on up. Why? Because all that compost. All that compost. All right, look how pretty that is. So what are we gonna add to this salad? Whatever you like, right? Whatever you like. I am going to add what I like. And I toasted up some pecans. So we're gonna put a little bit of pecans on the top. There we go. I like them because they're, this adds protein as well as a good fat to your meal. Okay, there we go. And I love Kalamata olives, so I'm going to put some Kalamata olives in this salad. If you don't like olives, don't put them. I love them. This makes a wonderful umame. Umame is that flavor profile that you just can't identify, but it's salty. And, well, you can't identify it, I guess. But it's more than just salty. It, it just pops the flavor of the entire dish. So put as many or as little as you want on here. And then you shall drizzle with the remaining dressing. I told you, so digestion starts with the eyes and we wanna make this look so pretty that you can't get rid of your family and friends for the holidays until all the food is gone. Look how pretty that is. I don't even wanna take it from here and put it in a bowl because it is just gorgeous all by itself. All right, now our gratin is out of the oven. Let me get a hot pot because this is still hot. Just came out of the oven. Look how ooey gooey all of that cheese is at the top. Thank you, my cousin Sylvia, for feeding this to me and for showing me this dish. And here we go. 
we need to be eating 10 to 12 cups of vegetables a day. If, you eat, if we eat this salad along with this gratin, you have all the vegetables that you need for a week. No, <laughs> for, for the day and then so. Okay, here we go. I'm telling you, when I had this, I think I had three portions at her house. It was so good. That was that ooey gooey wonderfulness. There we have it. See, we didn't need all that milk and heavy cream and all of that stuff. Now, if you wanted, if you wanted to, you can get some fresh Parmesan cheese. And not that it doesn't have enough cheese on it, but you can serve it with just a little bit more fresh cheese. It's kind of funny. In my household, my dad was oh, is always, still is, the person who grades the cheese. I'm at my cousin Sylvia's house, and my cousin, her husband, Massimiliano, is grading all of the cheese. It's adorable. They always have the guys grading the cheese. Don't know why. It's just a thing in the Italian household. So there we have it, our November butternut squash show. I hope that you make this butternut squash gratin. I hope you make this butternut squash salad with the tahini dressing and that you enjoy and that you feel nourished over the holidays versus stuffed, right? We don't want to be stuffed. We want to feel awesome about our meal and about the people we're enjoying the meal with as opposed to stuffing our mouths full of tons of food. You will be satisfied once you eat these salads. And say, if you would like my guilt-free holiday recipe ebook, go ahead and sign up for it. TinaMcDermott.com slash guilt-free holidays. Guilt-free holidays. The link is below. Thank you so, so much. Happy holidays to you. And until next time, namaste. Bye for now, everyone. Have an amazing holiday.